decade ago is when I felt the spirits of Gettysburg in my soul. And I guess we gotta make a believer out of Nikki because she doesn't she doesn't believe in ghosts. I'll be honest, like I was very on the fence about ghosts until I came to Gettysburg 10 years ago. And it completely changed my mind. Um, there's, a, there's a presence here that I've never felt anywhere else. <coughs> there's a ghost upon us. Let me out! Oh, Let me out? Artillery Ridge Campground in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. It's the closest campground to the National Battlefield Park. Uh, so we're gonna get a, hopefully a sense of the atmosphere that maybe the soldiers would have been um, experiencing. We just got here to Artillery Ridge. We're actually going to unpack everything, set up camp, um, and just get ready to explore for the rest of the weekend. Uh, we're roughing it for the weekend. Not really, we have water and electric, but we are tenting. And we're gonna explore uh, some of the sites around Gettysburg, some of the haunted sites, some of the historical sites. Anybody who knows me knows that I've had some haunted experiences here in Gettysburg. Some of the only haunted experiences of my life, so. One of my big goals is to revisit some of those places where I've experienced um, hauntings and uh, see if I get the same eerie feelings that I got last time I was there. Kim has actually camped here before. I have. How was your experience? It was good. Stayed here at night. We went into town. We took a ghost tour into Dairy Queen. <laughs> got a little dinner cooking. You can see it's getting, starting to get a little dark. Nice blue skies. It's calling for possibly a little bit of rain um, this weekend. We think we're gonna get hit a little bit. I'm working on cooking the perfect sausage right now. How's the food? It's good. Trying out a new tent, so we'll let you know how that goes. If you remember the last time I was in a tent when it rained, I got pretty wet. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here with Thad and Nikki. You remember Thad from season one? In several episodes. That is a lover of Gettysburg. Uh, I like the history. There's a lot of big historical feel, feel in downtown and around town. A lot of reenactment, a lot of actors and actresses and people doing uh, live role play type stuff. I think that's a lot of fun to watch. I just love history, so I like the history of this place and um, I like the small town feel, but still. Uh, Lots of stuff to do. A decade ago is when I felt the spirits of Gettysburg in my soul. And I guess we gotta make a believer out of Nikki because she doesn't she doesn't believe in ghosts. I'll be honest, like I was very on the fence about ghosts until I came to Gettysburg ten years ago. And it completely changed my mind. Um, there's a there's a presence here <laughs> that I've never felt anywhere else. So we've loaded ghost hunting apps on our phones. Nikki and I are going to have them on together. And so one thing that some of the ghost hunting shows have are spirit boxes or word boxes where some sort of words come through. To test ours, we're both going to have them playing at the same time while we're at the same locations. And that way, if the same message comes through at the same time, we know 100% this is real. So we had them on in our hotel room and one of the ghosts called us ugly. So what Well, up? certainly not me, but. <laughs> We're gonna head out and check out a couple spots around the town and hopefully have our first ghostly experience of the weekend. Stick with us, we'll let you know how it goes. We got a happy camper right here. <laughs> Darkness is upon us. You know what that means in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The ghosties are coming out to play. Oh the God. what, Nikki? The ghosties? They're coming out to play? Something just touched my hand. Oh! Oh my gosh! Oh my God, something just happened. Oh my God, oh my God. Something just, something happened. just happened. Oh my God. <gasps> Things are happening. 
Was that the cooler? It probably was. It was sitting on the ground. The ground's not even level. No, it fell <sighs> from the something just from shook. The chair. Something just shook the chair. Oh my gosh. And it wasn't even steady in the first. No, it it was. I saw that it was steady. There's a ghost upon us. Dad claims this is the oldest ice machine in the world. Definitely in this town. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. It's a wine breader run we go. So here we are, we're leaving the Colton. We're gonna head downtown to the first of our stops for the night. I sat in that chair right there at the window last year. Glorious. Dobbin House is haunted. They did take wounded soldiers in there during the war. And there were so many wounded soldiers and so much blood piling up that they drilled holes into the corners to let the blood drain out. So what we're noticing is there's a lot of ghost tours, a lot of guided ghost tours. Um, we're, doing, we're taking a different approach. Uh, Thad's done a lot of the legwork. He loves this place. He knows where we're going. We're actually kind of mixing in with a lot of the planned ghost tours here. Um, not by really choice or design. It just happens that way. They're always here. It's year round. Um, and we're visiting the same spot. So just an idea. I mean, you don't have to go pay for a tour guide. There's ghost tours going on around us for this one company. So we're trying to hit this location at Wine Run and Run while they are also trying to alternate to that location as well. We are in downtown Gettysburg on our way to Wine Brenner Run. We out here right now. It's a beautiful night, last night of May. Summer's here. So this is Wine Brenner Run. Wine Brenner Run is located at the end of town here at the southern end. This is where multiple bodies were piled up. Living and dead. The living were injured, the dead were piled right next to the injured. And so a couple of days into battle, you know, you had a lot of soldiers dying here and fighting ended after three days. Well, on the fourth day, you still had a lot of dead soldiers lying around everywhere, as well as uh, a great multitude of guys that were just laying amongst the dead soldiers that were injured and on their way to dying and they couldn't move themselves they were just placed there and they were stacking them along here and after 24 to 36 hours of straight rain they end up getting washed down this little run this little stream and even the wounded got washed away and this is how they died so imagine you're on your way to dying Nobody has any more whiskey to give you to numb the pain. You've been suffering for hours and now you're slowly watching water rising and it's going to take you away and that's how your life is going to end. So much fun for those guys. So Weinbrenner Run is uh, considered maybe haunted. It's realistic to say that hundreds, if not maybe even thousands of American soldiers from the North and the South would have died right here. We're gonna to try to use the ghost detector app, Word History Find, to see if we can find anything from any bodies, oh, ghosts that, that were left down here. One of the things to point out is that this is this is a run. This isn't a creek. This isn't hardly even a stream. This is a very small body of water. Um, so you can see why the bodies would have piled up here. Nikki's not impressed with the level of ghostly this year. Tell me words, ghosts. Try to turn all of our apps and lights off and just stand and be. Is your name Murphy? Oh, we got we got some activity. We got some words. We got words at the same time. Yeah. Murphy and healer. Murphy needs a healer. Yeah. Could Murphy have been a healer? A, a field medic. It would make sense to be laying here and say, I need a healer. I got aggression at the same time you got bloodletting. What's bloodletting? It's like, a, I guess, something to 
to yeah, relieve like, pressure. Relieve pressure, blood, maybe. maybe. Some sort yeah. of healing technique. Bloodletting, bloodletting is blood. the surgical removal of some oh of some God. of a patient's blood for therapeutic pur purposes. Okay, that's that's What's a little weird. Kim's getting a little creeped out. I have some chills right now, actually. Maybe we should uh, just walk a little bit out of here. Site number one, Weinbrenner Run. Pretty freaking creepy. I mean, my heart's beating a little bit. I was getting chills. Some weird stuff happening back there. We're gonna move on. I don't wanna spend any more time there. So I'm getting a little freaked weird, out, but we need to keep like, going. So we're going to the next spot. Remember, this is where they threw the body parts. Remember, like when they were cutting them off of people, like doing amputations? They were like it throwing them. Though. This was an amputation dumping ground. Yes, that's where they threw them down here. Okay, that makes me feel good. We're talking about the Rupp house, which is right yeah, over here. A lot of shots from yeah. both sides that went through this house because up the street, the Jenny Wade house and the Farnsworth oh, house both had sharpshooters firing yes. through these streets at each other. This is a span of well around 100 yards or more. So this is the Rupp house. The Rupp house had an entire family living there. Uh, in the end, the entire family died. That was about five people. The only one that was left was the wife who ended up having to sell the house off in the end because she couldn't afford to keep it herself. Rupp house is considered haunted by some of the kids and the husband that had died um, on the property. We're currently standing in the yard where, again, soldiers from both sides died together in the same place, in the same field. And there was a point where soldiers were kind of somewhere on one side of the house and somewhere on the other, literally firing at each other through the house. Yeah. And there were a lot of shots fired through this house while the family was inside. Wow. I can't imagine being the family stuck in the middle of a crossfire of, of, you know, a battle between the North and the South and kind of just clinging for life in their own house. This is actually a free museum. So one of those things to check out if you're trying to come down here on a budget. Enclosed. Enclosed in the basement, yeah. yeah. Let me out. Oh Let me out. Now I gotta go. Oh God, we are scattering. Let's just say we were all chased out of there. <laughs> Carol, Carol, wait. Oh my God, hey, no. Not. No, let me just no, no. a minute. No, 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 no. I can, I can check something. No. Oh. No, no, no. Did, did a Carol it can't be here? her. Did Carol? John and Caroline. Oh my God. What? All right, <laughs> Caroline. Oh, Carol. Boy. Caroline. Caroline? Take this before I drop but it. Caroline okay. wasn't here during the fighting. She went away. It doesn't matter. She inherited the house. She had to sell this. July 2nd, John's father came and took Caroline and the kids away, and John stayed in the basement. So she spent time in the basement, is what you're saying. Hey. All right, let's keep moving. <laughs> Hi, Carol. Caroline, I mean. You want to speak into my phone, into this box? Were you stuck in here going to fighting, the shooting? So we didn't get any hits from the second um, trip down to the basement, but the first one was plenty enough to get my blood pumping for two locations. Two creepy experiences so far. <laughs> a location of a small orchard where um, a fierce battle had taken place. There's a ghost story there that involves two boys from New York. And so that would be kind of cool to explore that area. And the school district, I think, actually has possession of that property now. And they had it fenced off and then they built something in the area and so they still have a small portion fenced off so we can walk near it not necessarily go into it unless we want to make an illegal run hop over the fence and you can't see what say happens that on camera. 
Well, I'm, there's not going to be any help I'm, from me. This is hypothetical. <laughs> I'm not saying anybody's going to do it. This was the location of a small orchard that had a very intense battle between the Union and Confederate soldiers. The Union soldiers were positioned a little bit further up this hill. The ghost story to this is that there were two brothers out in New York. One grew up, he was very strong, and their father had died at a young age. So the oldest boy was like this strong boy, strong farmhand boy, and they were a New York uh, division that volunteered for the war. The younger brother was always sickly growing up, always uh, needed care, his mom was always caring for him. And he, she made her older son promise to take care of the younger son during the war and to have him come home. So during this battle here, the older son was killed during the battle. And then shortly after the younger son was wounded, there uh, were stories sent back to New York by some of their friends from their town in New York that uh, the older brother had saved the younger brother that somehow the younger brother when he was hit during the battle he actually went blind he could have made his way back to the encampment to receive treatment but he made it back and he claimed that his older brother carried him there and then went back into battle his older brother told him that he loved him and would go back into battle and it was later on the younger brother returned to New York, survived the war, and then it was like weeks later, the story goes, that an old, uh, a letter from the older brother had arrived to the family saying that he kept his promise to his mother. I feel like I hear a gate opening. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It's just that. Somebody over there? That sounds really close. Somebody. I don't see somebody you. over there. We've already visited our third spot, but it just kind of goes to show you how much fighting was happening in such a small amount of area because we've only walked a couple blocks, um, yet we've. <laughs> We've walked past where thousands upon thousands of people would have fought and died. Uh, supposedly a very angry spirit that does reside in the Farnsworth and they keep it secret. So. In terms of them keeping that secret, I do believe that there probably is something dark in some part of that house. The guide that we had briefly mentioned a very angry spirit. He wouldn't say the spirit's name. He was scared of it. Not no telling a name makes it all that much scarier. You don't want to invoke something if you don't want to deal with it. It's been a pretty warm day, but finally here we are at whatever time of the evening it's starting to about cool 10, off and about 10 15 and it's starting to feel nice out here it's gonna be a good night to sleep outside clear skies we got stars up above us another tour across the street we're watching pa news stick with us this has been going on for minutes and this has been going on the app just going crazy that was in believe Somebody is trying to tell Nikki to believe. <laughs> what, is, what is this? What did you bring with us? What's attached to you from Nothing Rump House? Nothing is attached to Something me. is attached to you from Rump House. Needless to say, our first night in Gettysburg gave us plenty to think about and plenty to be scared of. It's uh, the morning of day number two here at Artillery Ridge Campground. We are just a stone's throw from 
the National Battlefield Park down here and uh, we'll be spending some more time there uh, this evening into the night uh, visiting a few spots that we think may potentially produce some of those uh, spiritual experiences like we had last night. Nikki had this dream last night and my primary concern is that maybe <laughs> Nikki now has a ghostly attachment. We were just at the rough house. I was there but like my body was not there. I don't know how to explain it. There was a lady who was like tall and very like gaunt looking. She is like walking from the back of the rough house into that yard, the side yard beside the house. And uh, the whole time she's walking from the back of the house, she's just smiling at me. And she has a bag. She's carrying a bag and she's wearing like a night robe. And her hair is just a mess. She looks like a crazy person. And so, and this whole time she just like has a smile on her face and she's carrying this bag. And she stops in the middle of the yard and drops to her knees and starts digging in the yard with her hands. And I woke up. Maybe it was Carol. Carol Vine. So what do you guys say? Are we ready to go to Gettysburg National Battlefield Park? Yeah. Yeah. Rock and roll. Ghost hunting around too. experiences that I had here about 10 years ago. The creepiest one that I still think about on a regular basis is the statue that came to life. We were driving through the battlefield park here, just like we are now, but a little bit later it was dark, and we come around a corner and I'm looking at this statue and the eyes start following me and I'm like kind of, you know, is, is that real? <laughs> so I turn around as we're passing the statue and the statue has turned around and continued to look at me. And that was the same night that we had um, some experiences at Devil's Den and also a little round top. So these are the places that we're going to revisit today and see if anything similar to what happened 10 years ago will happen again. This was, yeah. Little Round Top was one of the most famous battle sites right up there. I'm excited. We're heading up to Little Round Top, one of my favorite places in Gettysburg. I mean, it actually all happened from Little Round Top. There were just such strong odors of gunpowder and pipe tobacco smoke, two things that would have been probably the two strongest and most prevalent odors of the Civil War. Two ghost stories that I guess are associated with this location. Um, there are about 1,500 wounded or dead here on Little Round Top when the battle had taken place. And Southern Scouts, Confederate Scouts had seen this location, went to go tell larger divisions, and then by the time they returned back, they had lost this vantage point because the Union moved on top of it. And during the battle, the 20th Maine Division was on its way to aid here at Little Round Top and probably helped with the victory. And they got lost down here in the woods 
and it is said that George Washington's ghost guided them to Little Round Top for this victory. In 1993, they were shooting a film here about gays during the Civil War, and some of the extras weren't working at the time during the summer, so they had taken shade, taken cover up here, and a Union soldier appeared to them and said, these are for you, and dropped musket rounds into each person's hand and then disappeared through the woods. And they had taken the musket rounds to the prop manager, and the prop manager said, these aren't for me, I didn't send anybody to give you these. And then they carbon dated the musket rounds, which were from the Civil War era. This is the location where Confederate and Union troops met, and there was a big <laughs> battle here. Uh, about 2,500 wounded or died at this location. You can see this run is right here as well. This is another location where the sick and dead were piled up, and when the flooding occurred, they all washed away. This is a location where the Confederate army actually had a major victory. They actually won at this location. Uh, the ghost, most commonly known here for people to see, is a ghost from a Texas regiment. They were ragtag guys. A lot of their clothes were ripped and falling apart. They barely wore shoes. Some of them wore no shoes and walked around. And so this ghost is known to appear to people and kind of point in a direction and say, the way that you seek is there. And so he's pointing something out to people that visit this location. So we're here at Devil's Den. This is another place where I experienced some ghostly activity 10 years ago. Um, you can see right over there on that side, a little round top. While I was up there, you have a really nice view of Devil's Den. From Little Round Top, you can see Devil's Den. In Devil's Den, from far away, I could see eyes. I could see little light lights, like little like eyes lit up within the caves of the rocks of Devil's Den. Oh, so, animals living in there. Um, it could have been a pack of animals, or it could have been spirits. When was this? I mean, it's it's throwing it back. 2009, <laughs> probably. But since that night, 10 years ago, I've kind of wondered. What was I seeing in Devil's Den from up there at Little Round Top? What were those eyes? Are there animals living in here or are there spirits living in here? I don't know. Where are you guys at? Thad. Nikki? <gasps> the ghost got him! Nikki! Well, Thad and Nikki were supposed to meet us at the top of Devil's Den. We got here. They aren't here. said awkward when I was climbing up the rocks because I am awkward. We're here pretty much at dusk and there's a good many people up here at the moment. I'm not really sure what, what the best time of day is if you want, you know, try to get pure seclusion up here. It's up until 10 p.m. but if you come before dark be assured that you're gonna run into people um, but there is some parking here. Even when we got here with the amount of people that are here we were able to find parking. I look good. 
Damn, I'm fucking gorgeous. Was that the coolest thing? They have hiking paths and stuff built throughout the rocks that you can actually run through. You can be like Kim and jump and take Instagram photos. Like, just about everyone here is here to take photos for social media. A lot like we were doing at Ricketts Glen, to be quite honest. Whatever gets people out into nature and experiencing things, whether it's just going out to get pictures for Facebook and Instagram, as long as people are out here and getting even a piece of the story or like, some of the essence of what actually happened here and the purpose that this even exists and why it's a national park. Um, don't forget that those are the most important things of why this is here and why you're coming out here. The haunted spots I revisited weren't quite as scary as they were 10 years ago, but the views were still incredible. And the new haunted spots I did see left me with the same impression as when I came here. Gettysburg is a special place, and you can feel it everywhere you go. Whether it's the ghosts or just the immense history of the place, well, I'll leave that up to you to decide.